Okay, good evening. So last night we talked about the uh, Yom Kippur War, which was a radically uh, different type of war than the Six Day War. Uh, in the Yom Kippur War, number one is that they were caught by surprise. Uh, they had no time to uh, spiritually prepare. Although they were preparing for, for Yom Kippur, there was not, no one was thinking war was coming, uh, nor was the army prepared. They were in existential threat from the beginning of the war. The first few days of the war were really, really dangerous. Of course, the war would, would, would end um, the 20-day war approximately. Uh, at the end of the war, they, you know, the, everything had reversed. The third Egyptian army was, uh, was surrounded, and Israeli troops actually had not only reconquered the Golan uh, and the Hermon at the end of the war, which was a big battle. I think we'll discuss that. But they also were into Syrian territory within 40 kilometers of Damascus. At that point, of course, we know the history that the Russians really ended the war and threatened to, to literally put troops into the Middle East and cause World War III. And Kissinger used that to end the war. And the war would end, be forcibly ended by uh, threats of Russian intervention and uh, American uh, demands. So... But in the beginning of the war, they, they, they were devastated, traumatized. And the war would traumatize Israel for some time afterwards. That there were mass uh, amounts of losses and casualties. Not only were there mass amounts of losses and casualties, um, but uh, besides that, uh, there, there was a, a real feeling of we almost lost all of our lives, period. And the the... the or if Finland was started out saying is that, you know, sometimes you can he hear a message even and miss the message um, that the war, and he, he was speaking during the war, to all, towards the end, but during the war, um, about hearing God's message, realizing that we're obligated to do something. And he started off with this famous medrash, the beginning of Shmos, with Moshe Rabbeinu, that uh, Moshe had taken the stick and had seen Hashem, he has Hashem, how do you, how will, I, how will I know they'll, they'll listen to me? They won't listen to me. He said, throw your stick down and turn to a stake. Moshe runs away, but at the end, Moshe grabs a stick uh, and uh, turns back into a stake. And remarkably, this Roman lady, matron, says to Rabbi Yossi ben Chalafta, the great student of Akiva, you see from this story that my God, the snake is greater than yours because Moshe did not have to run away from this. Uh, the, the, the burning bush, but he did run away from the snake. Um, and as mentioned, he could have just said to her, uh, the difference is that God is everywhere, and he could run away from the snake because all this is a created thing. He didn't do that because she wouldn't hear that. But what he did tell her is, uh, is that the, the, the difference uh, uh, between the two, um, I'm just having to tell the language, um, uh, yeah, you could. He could have said, "Excuse me." He could have said that. The, sorry, he said to her that you, you, he was able to run away from the stakes. You see, that's even better. But he could have told her, "Look what happened to the stick," and then turned back to the stick. It's obvious, no God. But he didn't do that because she wouldn't hear it. It would, it would. She couldn't hear something that would literally be a, a, a checkmate on her right away. But what Ray Freeland brings is the remarkable thing. You could actually have an open miracle and miss the boat. And why would you miss the boat? Cognitive dissonance. Uh, cognitive dissonance. Um, even when you think, even when we imagine that we're working on ourselves and we're improving, uh, cognitive distance is really, really, a, 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 you know, a, a challenge. I, I, I mentioned this, and I see this, it applies to all kinds of people and, and all types of or Jews. Uh, but and I see all, especially with all the Jews, I, and I mean this interestingly, because, you know, Orthodox Jews, FFB, as they call them, from, from birth. So, to get them to grow out of the box. It, there's a box in orthodoxy, which is growth oriented. Uh, inherently, you, you work on your davening, you work on your learning, you work if you're a lady on your tzniyas, hopefully on a man on your tzniyas to an extent. The things you work on inherently, every yeshiva, every base tackle, but it's really like, it, it's, I wouldn't call it box, and then certainly not everyone does it, and it's certainly the purpose of life, but it, you still are in a, in a framework where when you become a bal tshuva, uh, you know, which is inspiring, and a person really changes their life. Uh, I mean, you've changed everything. I mean, see, 
you know, if you're grow up a yeshiva bachar, so you improve yourself, and you're improving yourself in a, in a framework which, for the time you're a little kid, you were taught, and it's a true framework about Torah and mitzvahs, and that's the framework you're going to work in. So the, the change is much more organic. Bali tshuva, and there's obviously different types of bali tshuva. So, you know, some come from completely. Uh, I'm not talking politically, a liberal lifestyle, and politically usually, but but I'm talking the lifestyle. L- literally liberal, actually, I, there's Nebuch, a Jewish guy who lives near me. I'm not sure if he's a, he, he's very friendly, but he will never talk religion to me. He's married to this, the waspiest, blonde haired blue-eyed girl you can ever imagine. And, um, I mean, so, so guyish looking. And I just, I literally, as I was coming right out to my sheer, they're walking on the on the street. Neither of them wearing shoes, and they're like a, a rainbow, a rainbow, uh, a rainbow blanket on top of them. And they're like covering the rainbow blanket. They're like, hi, you know, they're saying hello to me. They're wearing this rainbow. Like, they look like straight out of Woodstock. Uh, and you know, like if they, when the, he and he's unfortunately into right having kids, but when someone like that far away. Uh, becomes religious, it's different than, a, let's say, a Sephardi in Israel becoming religious who grew up with a Muna, it just wasn't Shomer Shabbos. But like, or even, uh, it was even different than uh, somebody who went to any reform or conservative. So this guy has nothing, zero zilch. Um, and his lifestyle is so radically different. So for him to become religious, and we have all know people who have like that, you're talking about literally changing night and day your life. It's, it's it's not an organic process. It's literally you change night and day. And you know what? I still find that I'm always amazed. I'm amazed by it. Is that even in that organic process, or not non organic process, we, 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 we are growing, you will find these amazing tzaddik and mitzakhanios, righteous people, still have blocks where they can't be honest with themselves. Sometimes it's their view, life views on certain issues. Um, I mentioned what they think, you know what the world can even use as marriage. It's, it's shocking to me. Anyone with a drop of Torah could even think it's even a drop okay. I don't care what political party you are. Um, but putting, creating the viewpoints, there are, there are parts of people's lives now that they don't want to give up. I'm not talking about like hobbies. Hobbies you should, sometimes unfortunately, Bali Chuva and or religious people think that you have to kill yourself to become religious. Which means, I say kill yourself, like kill some of your, uh, uniqueness, and that's unfortunate. That's actually an extreme, which does occur, and which should not occur. We're not talking about Hilchus Bal Tshuva or Hilchus Growth, because the Yeshiva Bachar and Hudu also, like, they have certain uh, natural outlets or talents that they should be using, and they squash it sometimes because they're interested in becoming very religious. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, like, core midas, hashkafas, that people just do not want to give up on. Even people growing, because it demands a change. And the reason is it's cognitive dissonance. And so what Ray Freelander points out is you can look to grow even. You could be, it's in the middle of war and people are looking, how am I going to change? But you may not, if you're not brutally honest, brutally honest, one for us. And he goes, just going back to the war, this is for sure, the ways of Hashem is way above what you and I uh, no one thing. Afo Piken, right? So we're going to sit there and know what, why this war happened. Afo Piken, Amik, with a little understanding that perhaps we can learn from it. We should delve into uh, we should get the right lessons. We should, we should learn the right lessons from this war. And not just to see. Rock is ma shenoach. It's not just what's easy, which what comes, you know, easy to see. Well, hasik maskanas kefish firos libeno, and to um, just take out. Oh, this of course, this is why this happened. The bottom line, he says in the pro- previous war, 1967. Uh, Actually, this Friday is over Shalim, it's Jerusalem, the 53rd anniversary of not Jerusalem. So in 1967, when that war happened, we had Yeshua's Atsumas, really unbelievable victories. And the miracles were apparent to all. 
right? It was really obligated to see how Hashem dealt with the world. Uh, everything comes from Hashem. Really, it was so overwhelming. Now, now again, you know, I talk about cognitive dissonance. I, someone's hacking me to China today, you know. The Zionism, pro, this, this level. It's like every, everyone wants the world to be in Israel and people's viewpoints of Israel uh, to be like in everyone's eyes. So you never really talk about it. Um, there's a, not here, but in certain circles, it's a very heightened sense of you can't speak bad or good or this. You know, the fact is, is that um, certainly in 1967, the vast majority of people, in, and I mentioned yesterday, let's tell you, there's, of course, a, a, a nice amount of people, a small minority, that the, that's what it was at the time of Bali Chuva, that they came from the Six Day War, and it really started the Bali Chuva movement. But on a whole, the majority did not walk out of the Six Day War uh, with the feeling that Hashem runs the world. He says, on the contrary, it was just the opposite. The IDF, the army, became this god, this, this Avodazar, really did it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't appreciate the army, it doesn't mean that their people give up their lives, and it's a tremendous, mysterious nefesh. It's all true, of course it's true. Uh, but the, the army became this emblem of human strength, the strength of Israel. In fact, there was a pamphlet, I think it came a few weeks later. This, this is the pamphlet. We did it. I mean, he's not going to bring it down. We did it. Not Baruch Hashem or Be'ezras Hashem or, the, uh, you know, Hodul Hashem Ki Toiv, Ki Lo Eilam Achasta, where Hashem, the miracles Hashem did for the people of Israel, for the nation of Israel, nothing like that. We did it. I D, I have a picture of the We did it. Now that's Koyche Vyatsi Mabu. And people thought the Israeli army was invincible. Like sometimes when I, was, when I was younger, I'm not sure if they still have this, they had, they had these baseball cards or basketball cards or, you know, people, they looked up. Um, somebody uh, just sent me, you know, like a thing about the World War II. So like you have these generals and this great army, look what we have accomplished. Um, and the people put their faith in the army and the wisdom of its leaders, Hamidian Parko and all of these people, again, he says in general, people were not believers in, 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 in ha, Hashem. Hen, uh, and, and, you know, they were still not believers in Hashem. There were, of course, religious soldiers, and today, of course, that's even much more than it was 53 years ago, much, much more. Uh, but the fact is they did it, and, and even for the religious um, while there was certainly much more, it wasn't this overwhelming uh, reality of it. Now, you know, say we have the Koisal, we appreciated that, it's true, and Kevin Rachel, we appreciated that, uh, that's true. And I think that certainly the, the religious population did appreciate the benefits of war. They appreciated the spoils of war. But we're talking about, like, was there a mamish, a tshuva movement? Was there a feeling of Hashem Gave it spare cards. Now, of course, that Sadiqim, the Gedalim all knew this, but for the, and the masses, it didn't, you say, come, come down. Even the masses were like talking about the military victories and how things went, went and the, how things were conquered in the picture. Even religious Jews, it certainly was the case. He says, but now, I feel almost so the truth is right now, this is, you know, as the, this is during the war, the, towards the end, but during the war. Um, um, and by the way, they would, they would be out. The, the, war, would, the fighting of the war would go, you know, I mentioned it, I think this is passing last night, it would be about 20 days, but they, 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 were, they didn't abandon their posts for months. They were still there in Hanukkah time, that, in the Sinai surrounding Egyptian there are until every, even though they signed the force that were to end, they were surrounding these armies. It was like all kinds of exchanges. They, they were gone for many, many weeks afterwards. Um, but he says, so this is during the war though, that both our enemies and friends say that how in the world did Israel get so stunned and shocked, completely stunned and completely shocked by the Yom Kippur War? 
and dangerously wrong. Um, it is Stamchos Mufarazas. We, we, we so we're overly reliant on our own strength and our own wisdom. I could Ivarad, we're so blind. And by the way, again, I spoke about there's a whole chapter in Charles de Higgs, Smarter, Faster, or Smarter, Better, Faster, Smarter, Faster, Better, one of the two, I forgot the name of the book. It's Smarter, Better, Faster, or Smarter, Faster, Better. Uh, he also wrote a very good book called The Power of Habit. In that, I think it's chapter four, which I used a couple of years ago on Yom Kippur. Uh, he talks about something called cognitive tunneling, that you become so ingrained in one idea that you cannot see anything else. Um, and they had these generals had kind of, there's no way Egypt would attack us. No way. Even as they mass hundreds of thousands of troops on the border, they did not call up the reserve because I think it was Kiora, one of the, you know, al was the defense minister of the Khazar uh, Yom Kippur War, but they, 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 they were convinced that as long as their, their, their air force was not completely replenished, they would never attack Israel. And they were so wrong because it, it, the war starts with tanks uh, and crossing on the Syrian front and the, and the Egyptian wrong. And they were positive that they didn't have enough of an air force to attack. And so they had a few hundreds of troops on the border and there was hundreds of thousands. I mean, you gotta be out of your mind. Who, anyone watches, what are you doing? Um, and they only had, they, they actually took back some of the troops because they had Yom Kippur break, they, they, they let them have the break. Uh, so when they got attacked, the Egyptians just waltzed across uh, into Sinai with nothing, they crossed the canal with no opposition uh, and, and actually captured hundreds of soldiers. And we do know that they broke the Geneva Protocols, they abused soldiers, both the Syrians and the Egyptians. Uh, you know, that's just as far as the history of the war. How did this happen? It happened because of Gaiva. They were so convinced in their own wisdom, their own knowledge. Um, they became blind. Now after the Maisa, the Galim and Ochich Modas, Shoaivenu Kvar Mizeh, now it's clear to the whole public. It's this, you know, you know, it, when, as the war is too, you know, a couple of weeks in. Zman Rav Tichanenu. We now know that the Egyptians and the Syrians, Syrians were making all kinds of pressure, uh, specific preparations. They Semino, and their idea was Lahashvis Amitol to destroy Israel. There's a Reino Es Yad Hashem Hamani, and here you could actually say that Hashem Hu Mashkiach Al Olam who runs off this world. Why did he let this happen? To, to destroy as Allah, the, the foreign god, as Hakoichi, the Eid of this is the strength of my hand, that we did it. And to break down this arrogance. Uh, we thought we had the D notification. We'll know exactly if they're going to attack. You know, and that's how these people talk. Yeah, they're not attacking. You know, the day before the war, on Erev Yom Kippur, the intelligence said there's no way there's any war. Day before. Crazy. We know we haven't. They, they, they had, they, in fact, they shot down people who were saying concerns. Um, they were so confirmed. Pierce, also, now these no, these people who know did, were, were, were who knew um, were you know were considered scaremongers, etc. And they knew better. And he says anyone who had open eyes could have seen what was about to happen. You had hundreds of thousands of troops on the borders, right? In, intelligence information, passing plans between the Syrians. Each other. They had that Erdogan Kipper, and they still refused to believe that they were going to be attacked. Meshiv Chachamim Vedaita Misacha. It's really the Pasuk. It's a very important Pasuk in uh, Yeshaya. What actually Pasuk?
uh, do you have a Rizara? So he says, oh, so it's all, you know, that me shiv chachamim afar be daitem yisachel, right? Me shiv who makes uh, wise and retreat and makes your knowledge foolish. And this is not talking to people who are inherently fools. You know, there's, there are world leaders today that you think they're bumbling or potential world leaders today that are bumbling fools. I mean, it, at the end of the day, that no, these are smart people, intelligent, uh, you know, went to top universities, have top degrees, have experience. Even these people, Hashem, can make fools. This, this, is, this is so important. We're really saying it's false. They're talking to Yeshiva, right? They're talking to, 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 to B'nai Teiro. When you believe in yourself, now what does that mean? If Hashem gives you a skill, you should use it. If you have a talent, you know, I just mentioned, I'm um, speaking to a bunch of writers, but all, most of them will be much better writers than I am. But I, I'm going to hopefully encourage them because they're novelists. I, I cannot write a novel. These people can write amazing novels. Like, use your, if you have that talent, you can write op eds. You could, you could write letters to the editor. You could be impactful. It doesn't you have to do it all the time, but you should be using these talents. The toiv, right? Um, if you have a talent, of course you should use it. If Hashem gives you an IQ, of course you should, but it's from Hashem. Now no one's born with their IQ. You know, if a guy's seven foot four and he's a good basketball player, you know, Hashem made him seven foot four and he made him able to jump. Uh, and, and he gave him the opportunities to meet the basketball coaches. It's all from a Kaddish Baruch but the minute we believe only in our intelligence and in our seichel and our prowess and our strength, um, we endanger ourselves. Uh, so the person should never believe in their own abilities. It means, of course, if you have talents, to use them. But everything, yeah, there's a, everything in life is the heirs of Hashem, you know, with Hashem's help, with Hashem's help, only with Hashem's help could a person be. Uh, successful. It's a pasuk in, in Mishlei. Tach el Hashem b'chol libecha. Have faith, put your trust in Hashem with all of your heart. Be al be nasfal to shine and don't rely on your intelligence. It means does that mean shut your brain? No. It means that there's human error. It means that we need siat the shmaya in whatever we do in this world. Upir shabin yona bin yona elucidates that pasuk in Mishlei. The tach el Hashem b'chol libecha. Rely on Hashem with all of your heart. Um, put all of your trust truthfully in Hashem. With the whole heart. Don't have any doubts. It's put all of your faith in Hashem. And Hashem will lead me. Hashem will put me in the right place. That I'll do my part. I will do everything in my way. It makes sense. And after that, Hashem will give me People think they're so smart, so intelligent. Um, you know, I said this by dating. I've seen disasters because you know people think they know best. Um, their career choice. And I'm, I'm telling you, as um, as a rabbi who gives counsel, who, who, who I'm certainly fallible. There's no such thing as rabbinic infallibility. Uh, we all can make mistakes. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's just like blatant that this person is going to be really hurting themselves. And uh, you can't choose for people. I learned that a long time ago. You can give advice, but you cannot choose for people, you know. Uh, so, and you think it's like, why can't this person see this? It's like so obvious. And very often it's that they just, they're right. And, and uh, you know, they are right. And not, it's not that they're right, that they know the situation, that, that certainly sometimes people don't do, but they're right and they believe that they're right. And it's not that they're looking to Hashem or to anyone else. They know best. And anyone who does that, um, you know, it's not with Hashem, it's, you know, is, is, is a tremendous, tremendous danger. And in particular, uh, when you have wealth and power, when you have wealth and power, like you think I went to this university, I made this very move. I did this. I could have such a strong army. I did this. The other calls. The person is simpleton, a simple person. 
No, a person doesn't have money. A person doesn't have oh, everything. So much it's very easy to say. But the person doesn't, you know, doesn't think it's them. But when you have it, your seichel, right? When the Israeli army bombs the Egyptian air force on day one of the Six Day War, and all the talk is how brilliant that move was. How they they went below radar. They went below radar. Uh, by the way, on when you know they, you know, like when they bombed Iran uh, in 1981. Uh, one of the people who were, saw them go below, below radar, he saw the Israeli planes before the Iranian, the, I mean, excuse me, the Iraq, uh, Asrak, Iraq, 1991, when they bl- bombed the nuclear facilities. King Hussein was on his yachts and he saw planes fly low and he, he, and he realized what must be happening. Like he warned them that no one believed him. But actually, Hussein gave a warning that some he saw planes with this was all within minutes, right? You don't think there plane that the, the Israeli planes flying low could have been caught by others? You know, the Egyptians. There's a million things that happened that day, but no, we can say we had such a great move, right? Such a great move. We did. It was such a decoy, right? You know, we, when we went, to, we sent the Mossad and we put a fake thing. We had a computer program. Right? Again, this is human nature. Human nature. Um, when you are when you are successful, when you are powerful, when you make great moves, if your name is Steve Jobs, uh, you know, and you you invent the, the iPhone. And it's not like Al Gore who claimed to invent the cell phone, right? I don't know what the world he was thinking, or, or, but you know, but he can claim all he wants. Steve Jobs built Apple, right? I built Apple. I, I built Apple. When you feel it, you did that. Uh, it's very hard to see that not everything that you accomplish is only from the Shabbat. It's much more challenging to have that when you have it. Look how smart I am. Um, and you can rely on your, on your brains. I'm, I'm, gonna be, I'm, gonna be, I'm sharing. I'm telling you, I've always learned this with children. Like there, there is no roadmap with raising children. There just is no roadmap. There are a few principles you have to use, but every child is different. Every child is unique. Um, there are so many factors for every human being, but when you're a parent looking as a child, you know, who they meet, their teachers, their school, their, 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 their physiological reality, their physical reality, their, their role in the family. There's like so, and, I, and I'm saying the only person I feel this, this all the time, that's out there. You have children, and every time, like, ah, oh, I help my child. Not you like the next another, something goes wrong with another child. It's like a reminder to me, like, it's not you. It is not you. You can't. When you are, you know, if you're really, uh, you know, when you're a parent, and you have some parents that have very easy kids, and the kids want to get married, they should look at and they just can't get married, or they have hard times in marriage. Like, when you're a parent, by the way, it's a great training that it's really not you. Uh, business also, you know, in much business, there's a lot of ups and downs, and that's to remind us. It's a gift. I heard uh, uh, you have a Yitzk Riemann, who's a fundraiser for Age for many years. He said, like, in his experience, he'll put an effort in one area and get the fruits of the effort somewhere else. And the reason is, is God doesn't want to think it's a gift. That God doesn't want you to believe it's you. It's such an easy thing to fool ourselves that look what I've done. Um, and it's much harder when you're successful. It's much harder when it goes in. Rock all of the spot the shop, but you should always, always, always put your faith only in a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Pasuk says, don't be wise in your own eyes. What do you mean wise? Again, if you have intelligence, listen, Amisha Feinstein was a tremendous Balabi and a tremendous unov, and a tremendous humble person. But he adjudicated the most complex cases in the Jewish people, from getting married after the Holocaust to all kinds of new realities in America, which no one had ever discussed before. Who was he to do that? No, Ramesha knew. Ramesha knew he was the biggest love of the of Paisic of the world. He was the Paisic of the world. It's clear that he knew who he was. But he, I, he's, how is he so humble? My father told me, my father grew up in the Lower East Side. My father learned in the MTJ Yeshiva. He knew he ate by Ramesha's house many times. Uh, isn't he, my father was in Yeshiva from preschool. Through uh, in, in his twenties, he stayed there for parts of university. Went to escape the Vietnam War a little bit, also. You know, he stayed there for a long time, and he grew up in the Lower East Side. Um, and through Matt, we're very distantly related to one of Ramesh's relatives. So that's how my father went to. She like, what? I said, my father, you said, you remember Ramesh? The bombs in the Lower East Side would be eaten by him. He never felt 
He never felt, you never felt gaiva by him, and yet he can pask in the most complex cases. You, when you ever heard Rabbi Shaviri see it, you read his writing, this one clear, I think it's clear by him. He felt that all of Hashem, that everything he has is only of Hashem, lets him be right. Even when he reads his, his introduction to his response to Igris Moshe, he says, who am I to write such responsa? But he says, my obligation, and, and he talks about it, everything is siyat Shmaya, everything comes from Hashem. Every, can you imagine the, the president, any, but like, not just Trump, who, can, who, who talks everything is from him. I mean, he's just like, obviously, but you heard Obama, what a ball guy, but David Brooks, who hates Trump, <laughs> but he wrote about Obama, he never met a more arrogant person in his life. It was, it's, it's an academic arrogance. It's, a, it's an elitist arrogance, you know. Trump is, is a buffoonish, buffoonish arrogance. But you don't have to be, you know, uh, crude. You can be very arrogant and be very sharp, sharp dresser, look GQ, speak very poised, you know, and be super arrogant, super arrogant. And I, I know best. I, I got best. It's, if you imagine any president, I mean, my life, maybe the closest in my lifetime, uh, I think it was the best, the closest George Bush had some humility and some would speak in some godly terms. Can you imagine that, you know, please God, like Yosef going to Paro, that is Hashem, like I, I can't translate it. You read, I just learned finish Daniel. Daniel going for Nebuchadnezzar, everything comes from Hashem. Here, the Nebuchadnezzar went to worship Daniel as an idol. And from the beginning, Daniel's, it's like everything's from Hashem. Every Daniel was brilliant beyond belief. Mensa plus 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 had nevuah had prophecy was was a true Renaissance man if you can use that language in the secular world and a Talmud chacham muflog in the Torah world filled with great chain and all Hashem all Hashem and that's what it means don't think you're a chacham in your eyes you can make anyone can make a mistake we're we're so dependent on everything we do with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. When things are going well, things are going dandy, gavaldic, great, amazing. You're financially successful. You have possessions. Don't let your heart say it. It's very easy. Person, when they have things going right, you have to daven harder, not less. <laughs> you have to daven. Harder not for you to get things you want to keep it, perhaps, but to not lose focus on Hashem. Uh, don't say in your heart, Oh, look how smart I am. Look at the business that I've built. Look at my wisdom. I can write books. Uh, I have great advice, wisdom. You may not say that, though. You may not be crude. You may think that way. <laughs> well, you can tell people who think that way. You can tell. You can tell Obama, by the way. I, I didn't mean David Brooks tell me most of it. The way he talked, it was so. I know best. I mean, you talk Michael Oren, who wrote the book Ally. Um, he describes interactions with Obama about dealing with Israel. That the he he would get lack. He even, you know he would be lectured to. And I'm saying he's not a person who talked that way. He didn't talk that way. Obama's sometimes he did. But he thought that way. Um, mm -hmm. He thought that way. He knew best. He he understood the world the best. Um, it, it, I'm not telling. I'm just too telling two presidents. This is goes with, this is for us uh, non-presidents much much more profoundly. Omar uh, Shavas. I mean, I picked on Obama because Trump is an obvious hit, uh, and Obama is less obvious because he doesn't talk in that way. It's not just. A, it's not a question of talking. Can I, I have met people who, who honestly, I mentioned before make terrible decisions because and they don't give an aura of arrogance, but when they make their decisions, they're arrogant. And I say that, and, I, and, I, and it makes me be scared myself sometimes because I see, I see like, you know, you're a rabbi, one of the perks is you live vicariously. You see consequences of these types of things. And um, there's no, as is Hashem, what does Hashem want? Is this right? I need Hashem's, no, it's like, I know best. Uh, I know best in my marriage, I know best in my business, I know best for my health. And, you know, it's not even, a, sometimes it's just a quiet, unassuming person that thinks this way. But there's a danger of being, relying on your, on your wizard. I'll be successful, I know exactly how this will win. 
the winning formula, the winning formula. No, everything says everything is from Hashem. Actually, at also we saw again that everything you know I mentioned. Um, the more him a little kavich, the little kavich for a few couple weeks ago. That Hashem, he ever should have or is miffed in habayis. He can't get through the threshold of your house. The ima kavich varcha with God, you can split the sea, but that, that's the reality. But there's nothing, nothing. I mentioned Steve Jobs, the man. That's sick at a young age. I remember his famous speech from Stanford, the, the, which I love, by the way. It was a brilliant speech. I've listened to that speech several times. You know, he beat pancreatic cancer. It was pancreatic cancer. How he talks, so he beat it. You know, he beat it. And, and, and it'd be, we come back a year later. Uh, you know, it, the, the, there is everything we do. Everything we do. We need to have the shmaya from the decisions we make from to walk out of the house and not get hit by a car, God forbid. So, <laughs> you know, um, so in the world today, we'll get, we're not going to COVID tonight. I mean, you think about the uncertainty that Hashem created in the world. Everything comes up. For years, Hashem, you can fear God, distance yourself from evil. The only way you can truly fear God is when you have bitachon. When you realize that it, it's not up to you. The, the, it doesn't excuse us from not making the most intelligent, wise decisions and thinking through it, and really to to analyze the, the big and small decisions we made, and to order ourselves, and to make sure our hishtalas, our efforts are 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 true and real and they're intelligent. But after we do that, the only way to be successful is to realize from Hashem. That's the only way we can truly fear Hashem. Why? Uh, when you realize that ultimate success is only from Hashem, and you can't look, well, I know so and so, I have this connection, I have friends with this person, and you accept in yourself, everything, every single thing, every single acquisition, success uh, comes from Hashem and only from Hashem. Uh, and you'll put your kivo, your, your hope for Hashem. You'll constantly look to Hashem. You'll be reminded in all times, right, in all places uh, of Hashem. And the Elia Gil Hashem is here. From there, a person comes to a true fear of God. The person thinks himself, oh, I'm very wise. The server had slachasai. Bala because the spots and you think it's up to me. Well, look, what, look what we did. IDF. Look what we did. Pigs, plaque, Harvard, pen. Right? Look what we did. Look at my business. Look what we did. We're the best restaurants in New York. You know, like the the closing Abigails. I got I got engaged. When I got engaged, the night I got engaged, it took my 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 my. My, my wife to be to Abigail's. And the people talk about Abigail's. I'm not really at Abigail's. I think I at all. I don't know. I'm not saying they did. But it was the restaurant. Abigail's closed. This, this week they announced they're closing Abigail's permanently. The best restaurant in Manhattan. Right? They have the best airline in the world. Advanced in all the things. The best in everything in this world. Um, I'm the smartest person in, in my class. Right? It's my intelligence, my drive. And I, I will just say, I'm, unfortunately, I've, I saw in my youth, um, and even my adult, but I remember looking back more profoundly, um, people go to colleges or universities or places and they sold their neshamas. Because, and the reason they did is because they thought it was up to them. I just go to Yale. Like, as a parent told me, like, I go to Yale. That's what I want to go. Like, put my kid go to Yale. Like crazy. Do you know the stuff that a kid would be exposed to in Yale? But I want my kid to be successful. I want my kid to be financial. Because you believe it's up to them. <laughs> forget about Hashem. Pasha, forget about HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You can, you, for, you can forget about, you can forget about Hashem. Like, no, a person, so you can even make terrible decisions because you think it's up to you. I just need to make this job the, the, uh, decision. That not only do you make bad decisions Jewishly, but it distances you from Hashem because you forget about Hashem when you're successful in the success. It weakens and 
of Imik's call of the person's Jer Hashem. Because we don't feel dependent on Hashem. On the, on the contrary, a person feels that all of their reality, all of their hatzlocha, in a bari isbarach, isbarach from coming to Hashem, for who is Baruch, and only Hashem gives all the chachma and all the wisdom, and all the strength. Therefore, so some of the for sure fear Hashem. We're going to hold here. Uh, he's going to connect it to what what the six day war wasn't, and what the Yom Kippur war was. But as I'm honestly, as I read this. You know, I think about COVID. Think about how many, how the world was before COVID. You know, we, technology can solve all problems, right? We, you know, the global world will be will be the future. And where we are today, um, you know, the, these lessons that we're t- talking about are so universal. We have a lot more to delve into. Oh, or Freeland has said about the Yom Kippur War, which which is certainly. Very no gay, very pertinent, very relevant for all of us. We will Mirza Hashem uh, pick up next Monday night. Okay, so have a good night, everybody. To be continued. To be continued. You know, this is like a serial because this is like yeah, in the middle, right? But TBD. Okay. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.